Hey, Lock fam and other people that are subscribed to this channel that are watching this amazing show. Um, welcome back to another episode of The Movie Shelf. That's where we take a movie off of this shelf, watch it, review it between 1 and 100, and put it up against all the other films that we've watched. Here is number episode 13. Um, we are going to go today with 1996's Swingers. All right. Um, this is directed by Doug Lehman or Lyman. Not sure how he pronounces it. Um, but this directorial uh, piece is written by uh, John Favreau, the great John Favreau, who you know now basically owns Disney. <laughs> Everything good that's coming from Disney right now is coming from John Favreau. He also stars in this film. Um, as Michael Peters, Mikey, Mikey. And he also was able to, to enlist in this film, his good friend, Vince Vaughn, who plays Trent Walker. Um, other people in this film of note would be Ron Livingston, who plays Rob, Patrick Van Horn, who plays a boy named Sue. And Heather Graham, of course, who plays the great Lorraine character. Now, of course, there's other people in this film but these are the main ones that we want to talk about during this review i love it i love films when they pay homage to what inspired them i love music that does that as well the budget for this film was two hundred thousand dollars it's not a lot of money but when you're doing a buddy picture that doesn't require a bunch of special effects practically you can film everything on location um, presuming you get the correct permits, which they did not do largely for this film. It was filmed around in and around the areas in Los Angeles um, and Las Vegas as cheaply as they could make it, like I said, with the $200,000 budget. The film ended up grossing um, $4.6 in the U.S. Now, this is a small picture by all, by all rights, um, one of the great things about the time and age that we grew up in, 96, um, you may not have seen this in a theater. In fact, most people didn't. Like I said, $4.6 in revenue. Um, that's not a big movie. However, when rentals, when you could still go to you know Blockbuster and rent a film, that's how I saw it. Um, this movie is a buddy flick i would say it's a comedy okay i'll just give you the basic lowdown of the of the plot mikey is a new york to los angeles transplant he's moving there after a recent breakup with his girlfriend and he's trying to become an actor slash comedian along with all of his other friends that are trying to do the same thing presumably along with millions of others who have a dream of being in motion pictures and and or the entertainment business okay this movie i will tell you <clears throat> while fiction is loosely based on the experiences of john favreau when he first moved to los angeles he was just broken up with a long-term girlfriend um and he counted on his friends vince vaughn and ron livingston to cheer him up so why not write a story about that um he did and it became this film um the characters they play obviously are going to be based on themselves the interior um and exterior of mike's apartment mikey mikey's apartment is actually the place where john favreau lived during the filming of this film so <clears throat> while the budget of the film was small the budget of the man was also small he was virtually an unknown at this time he had acted in a few things before. Um, <clears throat> we'll give Rudy as one of those. And Vince Vaughn is also in Rudy. Though they have very limited interaction, if any, in that film. Um, they were friends and they both worked on that film. And it's a great film that I hope to review at some point as well with the great Sean Astin. So a lot of these things, um, they're coming up. Um, and I, I'll end up reviewing them because, 
you know, one thing leads to another. I'll talk about that film here and then I'll go and, and I'll review it. Um, so we have it. So, okay. <clears throat> We've established Mikey's character. The other characters are LA, you know, they've grown up there. They're there and they know Mikey for they don't really dive too much into the backstory of how they know each other, but they all do know each other and they're all trying to make their way through the Los Angeles party and entertainment scenes. You guys know how I love studio interference. Well, when you have a small budget film in the, almost independently made, um, and they're putting up any, any kind of capital whatsoever, they want a stronghold and put their information and their stamp on each of these films. Well, they didn't want John Favreau to be in it. They didn't want him to cast his friends in it. Um, and I'm not sure how they ended up doing that. So if anybody knows, please let me know in the comments. Um, that's one thing that I would love to know is how they actually convinced the studio into allowing this. Um, it is rated R. It should be because the word fuck, sorry, appears 95 times. A uh, bitch is used 31 times. An asshole is used 13 times. I think that qualifies as rated R. There is no nudity in this film. Um, there is suggested sex and a little bit of violence. Um, not much. But some of the things that I want to talk about is um, are the homages, okay? When the main characters are first seen playing video games in Trent's apartment, Trent being Vince Vaughn's character, um, Reservoir Dogs, 1992, and Taxi Driver, 1976, both films that I hope to review at some point, those posters can be seen on the walls. All right, later on, Mikey, uh, Mikey and Trent argue about Martin Scorsese and Quentin Tarantino and whether or not Tor Tarantino copies or pays homage to Scorsese's work. Um, that's quite a funny little interaction there. And obviously, they're making fun of themselves because... They're mentioning both of those artists while copying some of their uh, film sensibilities in this film as well. Um, the next scene is a deliberate tribute to Reservoir Dogs, the iconic opening scene where the main characters are walking in slow motion. Um, they set up that that shot. I'll, I'll see if I can find screenshots and put them up here for you. Uh, I don't know that I'll be able to do that, but if not, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you watch the film. Uh, it's one of those things that you just, as a film lover, you just appreciate somebody, you know, tipping their cap to their fellow directors or the people that inspired them to make films to begin with. Um, I really do like this film. Like I said, I stumbled across it as a as a youth, and it's been on my movie shelf ever since then. It's a great watch. It was followed up by other movies like Made, um, which is also classic Vince Vaughn. There's actually, I'm not going to do the monologue, but there's a monologue in there where Trent compares Mikey to He's like, you're this big fucking bear, man. And you got these paws, these big paws, and, and you don't know what to do. You're like this, you see these women and they're like a bunny. And you're just batting the bunny around with these big claws. But you're so fucking money, man. And you don't even know it. All right. So I did give a little bit of the monologue. Um, that monologue is said to have been taken almost verbatim from a conversation that uh, Vince Vaughn actually had with John Favreau about the exact scenario that's that's displayed in this film. A little bit of uh, useless knowledge, if you will. Um, Trent's license plate, and by the way, Trent's car that he drives in this film is actually John Favreau's car that he had in real life. And it's a K car is what they call it. Not sure what that 
refers to, but the license plate, if you look on it, is THX 1138, which we all know is George Lucas's first film, 1971, um, years before Star Wars. But without that film and, and the success that he had of making that film, we don't know if we ever would have got Star Wars. We just don't know. Um, the other terms that they use in this film are you're so money and that was taken i believe they that he took that based on a spike lee michael jordan commercial where spike lee tells michael jordan that he's so money it's a nike commercial um Favreau saw those commercials and he's he it brought back the first time that he ever heard the word money which uh in real life was vince vaughn said that said it on the set of rudy um he said this movie is going to be so money and again that term is we know we all know what that term theoretically means money it's good it's awesome it's going to reap rewards you know something of that nature but to call something money means uh it's great so this movie is so fucking money um didn't make a lot of money but the rental did really well and I'm proof of that. Me and my brother are proof of that. Um, so there's that. And then when he turned it into the studio, this is the thing that frustrates me. All right. They were looking for potential investors uh, for, for distribution and those types of things. And they all wanted them to get rid of all the money, honeys, and babies from the dialogue i don't what's the point of that then you're removing the essence of the film and the essence of some of the characters the key characters in the films these are phrases that they use and just because we hadn't heard them in this day and age all the investors wanted them to remove them from the film which would is ridiculous when you look back at not only the success of the film but the success of the people that made this film moving forward um, among other studio notes John Favreau received from potential bidders were to get rid of the Las Vegas uh, scenes. Those are some of the best scenes in the film. I mean, and it's a large chunk of the film and where you meet the principal characters. Uh, I don't understand. I don't understand studios. They wanted to turn Trent's character Vince Vaughn's character to be non-existent they wanted to turn that into a female character or have Trent played by somebody more famous like Johnny Depp or Chris O'Donnell or Jason Priestley somebody with a face uh and again they they just didn't know what Vince Vaughn would go on to become and he's been in many things very memorable face, very likable character in most scenarios. Um, he said no. He said this is this is the movie. This is what we're doing. And finally, he got um, Miramax and some others to latch on, and we got the movie that we got. And I'm glad that we did because it really is money. Uh, okay, all these things said, I don't want to take too much time on this review because there's many other films on the movie shelf that we need to get to. So I'm going to drop down to the final thoughts. Um, just going to say, if you haven't seen this film, or if you haven't seen it in a while, I watched it again. And I mean, it's, it's just laughs all the way through um, the hockey playing sequence. There's a scene where Mikey talks to his answering machine and it's almost like it's, AI and it's really responding in real time. Um, that's the only thing that you can really question is like realistic. It was supposed to be an ongoing running joke in the film where he would have conversations with his answering machine, but they cut the rest of them. So this is the only one that made it in. So it kind of seems uh, like the joke is lost on a lot of people. But uh, again, if you can tolerate that and get past that it's it is again one of the the most funny laughable scenes um in the film so swingers 1996 what do we got for a rating on this one 
well, it's a comedy. It's one of my favorite comedies of all time. Um, don't know if you can buy it on 4K yet. I just have the Blu-ray here. Um, I did own it on VHS at one point. And of course, when it went to DVD, I picked it up then too. So this will be my third time that I've purchased this film. And I will buy it in 4K should it become available. Um, but let's get a rating here. Um, I'm going to go. I love it this much, you guys. I'm looking at the other movies on that I've reviewed on the movie shelf. And I have to put this one. I'm looking and I'm like, oh, I like it better than that. It's better than that. I like it better than that. So I have to rate this one an 88.4. 88.4 is the rating on this film. That brings it to number seven on the list uh, from the movie shelf. So do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you like this film? Do you hate this film? What do you think of John Favreau? Did you watch this back in the day in 1996 and know that Vince Vaughn and John Favreau were both going to go on to be some of the biggest stars in Hollywood? Would you have guessed that from the first time you saw this film? Who knows? Um, but I will tell you this. The first person that makes a comment on this video in the comments section on YouTube will receive one of these beautiful Lock 22 koozies sent straight to your house. Um, this is my way of helping engagement for these videos. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. It's all we got in this world. I want to keep making these films or these uh, reviews for you guys. Um, and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. And the, and the feedback has been overwhelming. And if there's a film that you would like me to review, Feel free to let me know in the comments section. I'll put it on the list. I have a, li a huge list. It's growing every day, which makes me very happy. Um, I can't get to everything right away. Because um, I'll look down the list and I'll be like, all right, I feel like watching that today. Because I do. Re this is not just my memories of watching the films, you guys. I go in and I I rewatch the, the film at least once. Sometimes twice, maybe even a third time. Um, and I try and get those to notice as many things as I possibly can to add into these reviews. Uh, I want to make them between 10 and 20 minutes. I don't always get under 20 minutes. I'm really trying though, folks, because I want to get you good information on the film, good intel, and a good review. Um, but that's it. Swingers 1996, 88.4, 7th on the list. Thank you guys for watching. I love your support. Keep me going here. See you next time on The Movie Shelf.